welcome to Dustin's Kaleidoscope. I am Dustin, and I have the pleasure of being here today with three members of Sneaker Boutique, and we are here with Nayla, Ernest, and Whitney. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for having us. So all three of you are part of Sneaker Boutique, yes. and um, Nayla, I know that you are the founder. Yes. Of so first of all, can you tell us exactly what is Sneaker Boutique? Um, Sneaker Boutique is an e e-commerce e site that is dedicated to streetwear. Um, retro wear, which is 80s, 90s retro wear, as well as skateboard attire. So we carry footwear, accessories, and clothing. Okay. And Ernest, how are you? What, what is your role? So I'm involved in uh, the marketing of the company, as well as uh, finance. I'm a part of some of the uh, creative financing, uh, planning, and things like that. So I do more so on that end. Okay. And Whitney, what do you do? I um, serve as the creative director. I do a lot of the campaigns, the ad campaigns, lookbooks, um, inside exclusives on our media portal that we have as an added addition to the e-commerce platform just for our customers to have an overall shopping experience from point to point. So you all are obviously all part of the, uh, Sneaker Boutique, but did you, you were the founder, did you start it first and then the two of you came in or how did it, how did it start? Um, well, yes, I, I came up with the idea. However, we all kind of went in together when the, the doors opened. Um, I had an idea, an epiphany, actually riding home one day from the corporate job that I was at at the time. Mm -hmm. And I hit up uh, Whitney with it. I was like, you know what, I want to do a sneaker store. There's not too many sneaker stores that are ran by women. So I told her about the idea. And initially, we were just going to do like a brick and mortar store. The e-commerce came kind of came later down the road, so she was like, "Oh, I'm game for that. That sounds like a great idea." Um, and then, you know, planning and going through it, a couple months went by. And then I actually hit up Ernest. I was no longer at the corporate job we were at. However, me and Ernest still kept in contact. Told him about the idea, and he was like, "You know what? That sounds like a winner." And then we all got married. <laughs> <laughs> So, okay, you, you said you initially started it as a sneaker store, but mm -hmm. you carry, what, what do you carry? You carry more than sneakers, it, right? It evolved. You know, the streetwear culture kind of is just more than just sneakers. It's hats, it's sweatpants, T-shirts. So it kind of evolved, and the component of New York City is, all, you know, constantly growing. So we kind of reached from New York, L.A., Atlanta, and we kind of merged that into to one system. So... It started out as sneakers, and it was just going to be mainly sneakers. Um, but now everything, sneakers is about 20% of what we carry now. Wow. It kind of evolved into a full scope. So. And, and how did that happen? How, how did it evolve? Like, maybe you all could also answer this as yeah. well. Sure. Well, um, it's weird because people want a whole outfitting experience. They don't just want the footwear without the hat or the hat without the belt, you know? Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of where I married the two. And um, it was interesting because people started to kind of just contact us. Oh, we like what you do. We like how it looks. We like what you carry. I think this would be a good, a good option. And we then started really investigating a little bit more different designers, how the streetwear culture is really an overall experience from head to toe. And so from socks to um, unique umbrellas, book wow. bags, you know, eyewear, it's all a part of that shopping experience that people really like to get. And I like the fact that we don't carry everything that you can go into the mall and buy. Okay, you know, it's, yeah. it's really exclusive, it's really modern, it has like a retro panache, but it's super funky. And you know, the twist, I think people from domestic and international have really been able to connect with that. So that really for us has been a hole in one. And yeah. so uh, maybe Ernest, you can speak to this because I'm thinking when you procure all of these things, they cost money. So uh, what do you have to do as far as like keep the expenses so that you so that you actually make money or go toward making money? I would say the main thing is just uh, learning how to budget. Uh, you know, right now we don't have any venture capitalists behind us. Uh, we're you know self funded. So, you know, I guess the main thing is just paying close attention to the financing, uh, what expenses are going to what, and just learning how to manage everything on a shoestring budget. And so is your, so I, so for all of you, um, is your background in marketing, is your background in um, finance, and is your background in entrepreneurship, or what, how did you all get to this point where you have these three different areas of specialty? Sure. Um, 
Ernest, his background is in finance, so he has a pretty extensive uh, history there. Um, for me, fashion and uh, fashion merchandising management more so. And um, Nyla, business and entrepreneurship. Okay. So. Yeah, she answered that for us. <laughs> 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 so is, your, is this your first business that you started or have you done? Other? No, I've dabbled in other things. I've failed at some things, did good at some things. Um, never got so far as sneak a boutique. Okay. So I've made mistakes. I've learned from them. And this is, this is, this was time coming. So this, this is going the way that it needs to go. And your business is now about a year old at this well, point? Yeah, we yep. just celebrated one year. A little one over year. A year now. Oh, that's hey. awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Thanks. <laughs> and so now that you've been in business a year, you must have some, you can look back and see some of the things that have worked and that have not worked. Like what, what are some of the lessons um, you have learned? Like each one, can you give me one thing that you've learned from this experience? Um, I've learned the definition of teamwork and perseverance. So. I would say I've learned the definition of patience, mm -hmm. that you're not going to go from, you know, A to Z all at once. You just <laughs> <laughs> That's why I looked at you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so, yeah, patience. So, Neil, now you're going to have to think of another one. <laughs> Darn. Um, I've learned how to humble yourself, actually, mm -hmm. because you're going to go through so many different obstacles, some good days, some really great days, and some days where you're like, I just want to throw in the towel. This is too hard. Mm -hmm. So you got to kind of humble yourself and remain meek in this, in this game. <laughs> so how do you all do that? I mean, I, you, you've been in business now for a little bit over a year, mm -hmm. and I'm sure there are days that where you're just like, you know what, I'm done. I'm going to go back to the corporate environment. As a team, what do you have to do to keep going? We have a lot of pep talks amongst ourselves, actually. Mm -hmm. um, there are days that we, you know, when we're not in our physical location and one is doing something else, we have a chat that we have to pump each other up. Sometimes the conversations are really nice and comforting, and sometimes it's like, hey, we got to get on this. You need to get on the ball. Yeah. Stop being depressed. <laughs> Whatever you're going through, let's knock it off. <laughs> so we just have to pump each other up and we all equally have had those days where we wanted to throw in the towel so we just try to be each other's support system yep that's and then awesome. faith also you know faith is the number one and how have your families responded? i mean what do they think about when you because you all were in corporate jobs before this mm -hmm. yep. so what did they say when you said hey I'm, i'd like to do something entrepreneurial well for me um <laughs> You know, I've always been like a risk taker, so it doesn't shock them. They're just like, you know, are you sure you want to leave that comfortable salary? Oh. So for me, that they're not shocked when I want to jump off the ledge. <laughs> okay. So that for me wasn't a shock. No. Yeah, I say uh, my parents had similar reaction. Uh, it was more so, you know, are you sure you want to do this? Because, you know, I did come from a you know, comfortable corporate job. Um, and whatever decision I made, they were, you know, behind me 100%. So... Okay. Supportive. I, I just think idea. that my family has really admired the creative input um, in terms of knowing my strengths and being able to apply that. I don't necessarily know, in all honesty, if they have jumped on board 100% with the entrepreneurship <laughs> component, but we are working them through it. And so, <laughs> you know, that's it. I that's think we all, all can say that we have something to prove, too. So, yeah. yeah. Well, because it comes from the heart. Correct. And so it's yeah. not that we have something to prove because you said no. It's it's a matter of, you know, utilizing what your God-given talents are to be able to apply them to a massive audience and being able to touch that audience with your mission. I think that as three young professionals, we stand in a pretty good um, light to be able to segue into younger, That well, I would say the next generation coming out, okay. to be able to show them that there's options out there and there's more ways to get to the green versus in just one that we're traditionally taught. That's awesome, because I think you all will, or are examples for people who are, even not just for the younger people, I would think for older people too, who are yeah. thinking, you know what, maybe I can take that risk. Absolutely, yeah. I hope, I definitely, we, our hope is that we do touch, well, if, if one can get it, you know, from, from something that we say or how we, you know, display our example of, of perseverance and determination, then I think that that's phenomenal. And how have your customers responded to, you know, you said everything from socks to yeah. clothing, you know, to They're other dope. types of clothing. How have they responded? Our customers are pretty dope, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they right? They love it. It's yeah. true. <laughs> they are funky. They're not afraid to take risks. 
you know, they'll step outside the box even if they don't get it yet uh -huh. because they can kind of figure out how it's to be outfitted. They're like, you know what, I've never thought that on myself, but now that I see how it looks, I will try it. And so I think that that has been some pretty cute add-ons to our business. I like that. I like that. Do you all have anything to add about your customers? Um, I like the diversity of our customers, how some can be from, like, Japan or Australia and Hawaii, and they're all, like, similar to each other through fashion. That's it's, like, so crazy how that draws people together, just like music is universal. Right. I think fashion is, too. So totally. So, I agree. Yeah. So totally. And you, so you mentioned that people see what they have on did you so your business is a physical storefront and also online or is it just online at this point or it's we have a showroom still in New Jersey um, but we have an e-commerce site and we use a lot of social media so okay. we have Instagram Pinterest everything that everybody's using right now and we outfit our outfits sometimes so we'll lay them out or we'll put them on a mannequin and oh, okay. we give you a visual of how it will look or even on another human too so we give you a visual presentation beforehand of how something is going to look and so if people want to follow you on Instagram what is your Instagram handle at sneaka boutique and it's sneaka s-n-e-a-k-a-h boutique so it's not your traditional sneaker <laughs> and, and Pinterest the same thing at Sneaka Boutique. Okay, we have about a minute, um, then we're going to come back. Um, okay, cool. But and just one last thing, like what have you each learned about yourselves? You know, before um, this past year, just one thing. I'm going to let you start. Ernest. Oh, way to throw it on me! <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking up, getting ready to think about it. Uh, you know, that, that's a good question. What have I learned about myself? I would say I've, this this year has been rewarding as well as testing. So I would say I learned uh, like just to be like mentally strong. Okay, all yeah. right, that's yeah. your one thing. And yeah. we have one minute, so I'm gonna ask you very quickly and then. Quick, yeah. <laughs> I've learned that I still have a lot to learn. I thought I knew everything, but you definitely don't. So okay. I've learned that, that I still have a lot to learn, even myself. That's a good lesson. Absolutely. And for you, Whitney? Um, sometimes the importance of sacrifice. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. All right. So we're going to be back in about 30 seconds. This is Dustin's Kaleidoscope. I'm Dustin, Dustin and we'll be right back. Local government, local educational institutions, and local community members all use cable access TV to communicate their message. They depend upon it as an affordable means of outreach. Public educational and government access television empowers local government agencies, individuals, and groups to use the media to speak directly to their constituents in a more direct and cost-effective way. Make sure everyone has a voice. Support your local PEG channels. Welcome back to Dustin's Kaleidoscope. I'm Dustin, and I'm here with three people from Sneaker Boutique. We have Whitney, Ernest, and of course, Nayla, the founder. And we're going to talk a little bit about the actual apparel that you sell. And you have a few things here. So, Whitney, could you um, show us the backpack? Sure. So, one of our vendors, um, we love Spray Ground. Um, they create such creative pieces the, on, on the book bags, their designs. This one particularly was a collaboration that they did with a vendor called Cupcake Mafia oh, okay. out of Atlanta. And uh, Nyla also has a spray ground book bag as well. They really oh, okay. do custom pieces for the season. And um, every time they come out, they just come out swinging with their new designs. So we're really looking forward to the holiday and uh, their spring 2015 yep. pieces. Um, isn't she cute? That is, I like that. I like that <laughs> little grill on the bottom yeah. and everything. It's so dope for right now. Um, so, yeah, these are some. And then we have the Gourmets, another one of our um, outstanding vendors. They have been doing lifestyle sneakers for some time now. And, okay. And uh, Ernest is, is wearing those. So lightweight, so comfortable, true to size. I mean, amazing for both men and women, and they're unisex. So. And is it, um, I can't tell from here, is mm -hmm. it like leather, suede? Yeah, or is so it? it's like cork. 
That's okay, what? this is like, yeah, isn't that? It's a cork. It's, it really is cork? It or so is. It's so the material. And then they have the suede on the outside. That is cool. And, you know, the laces. Um, premium. They look cool. They feel great. You can wear them to, you know, out, out. Or you can just kind of wear them as a lifestyle sneaker to work. Wow, yeah. that's very cool. Pretty funky. That's very cool. Um, and you did a collaboration. The t-shirt is part of the collaboration you did with. Yeah, uh, so we're really uh, proud of that. Our first collaboration we did in under a year with Cross Colors, a vendor that is known notoriously for the late 80s, early 90s. And we did our exclusive Be Dope capsule tee for back to school with them. Awesome. And um, again, unisex for both male and female. And we really highlighted our hashtag, which is Be Dope. That is really one thing that we live by every single day and it allows us same with a little matching pin shout outs to Keith <laughs> Very Aaron nice. and the inspiration behind that um, <clears throat> really bottom line for that is really just making sure that we project that we want all of our customers to be the best selves, best selves that they can be from within using fashion to just share that with the world but right. really being the best selves that they can be that's awesome so, yeah. and Naila I know that you are dressed head to toe with I Some have, of the um, things that you saw. Popular sell. Demand, which is one of our vendors actually from LA. Mm -hmm. um, I have on original cross colors as well. So, yeah, I'm pretty. Yeah. So you have everything. And I have Odd Future, actually, Odd Future socks on. <laughs> <laughs> so you literally have everything from oh, she oh, lives. And I have <laughs> a Yo MTV Wraps yeah. Flood Watch. Got so zoom in on that. that. <laughs> <laughs> actually, Who remembers that show? Like that? Who remembers Yo MTV, MTV Raps? Raps? Yeah, that stuff. Okay, oh, when that music television was music television. Exactly. You understand? That is so. <laughs> yes. That's funny. I love that. I love that. Thank so you. all of these items people can find online in yes. your boutique. Yeah, Correct. this is awesome. Easy, yeah. Yes, ma'am. Now you know we were talking a little bit um, about your how your company is different in that you actually have people from all over you have people from Japan like internationally yes who come in and buy your your um, your mer merchandise however you know how did you go from the point where it was just you putting things out there and then actually being very successful with the how you um, with, with the things that you actually put out there well it is a lot of uh, trial there is some trial and error behind that and then there's also a lot of research so what I do is I pay attention to music and what people are wearing in their videos and some of the popular shows um, to kind of get inspiration because you can tell what's going on there. And then if you look outside at three o'clock, you can see what these kids are wearing as well. Oh, okay. So it's, yeah. it's uh, grassroots stuff. It's technology, watching the videos because music is such an inspiration and music and fashion collide. They're always together. Right. So it's a little bit of everything to kind of see what's going to work for us. Okay, okay. That's very cool. And so I know that you have some things that you are going to be doing in the future. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Why don't you tell, tell them some more ideas and some things we got coming, coming up. All right, well, uh, one of the, uh, the big ideas is that we're looking to uh, branch out more as far as our headquarters are concerned. Uh, let me mention that. Yeah, go ahead. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so want to give away so, too much. That, <laughs> that was okay. So um, as Check Nyla that. as Nyla mentioned before, right now we do have a storefront that's located in New Jersey. Uh, we're looking to branch out uh, into areas, such, for example, Atlanta. Uh, you know, eventually, you know, LA, and just more international. And and is there a specific time for the rollout? Uh, 2015. Okay. So. Early, 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 yeah. early 2015. Like first quarter, hopefully. Mad early. Yeah. It's like, no. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah early. Um, we definitely want to touch our international audience. We think that that's super important. And we really want to expand on the digital component of this business. That is what we're going to be doing. And we really want to be able to give our customers a full uh, head to toe shopping experience that they can just, with the click of a button, kind of almost see themselves in the clothing before they just before they decide to purchase. So and we're working on a cool app as well. We are really oh, cool. getting that yeah. popping. Yeah. So that's So what is your URL? Uh, www.sneakaboutique.com and that's spelled S N E A K A H boutique.com. Yeah. Okay. And Ernest, you know, you mentioned the expansion. Are you all looking for venture capital is that venture capital um, as far as helping you fund, or is this all going to continue to be self-funded? I mean, well, right now it's self-funded. Um, 
I can't imagine us turning away venture capital. <laughs> so we're always looking for opportunities. So we're always, you know, looking out for that. Okay. And angel investors, any? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. At any level. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, so once you, so your your strategy is to get into um, areas like Atlanta and then to Los Angeles. And so is it something that you want to do as far as um, have other people at those locations? Or do you all plan to be at those locations? Or is it... How, how do you understand? What's, great question. What's that? <laughs> understand. That question. I think I think that at each location, one of us will go there for a couple of months to make sure it's overseen properly, and then we probably hire like a regional regional director okay. to handle like that coast. Um, I think that the LA location would be more for like the media aspect for some of the things that we're doing with SBTV, mm -hmm. and the Atlanta market would be great because we'll have access to like Miami, Charlotte, which are up and coming places. In terms of fashion, um, Atlanta just celebrated, I think, their third fashion week. Yep. So they're oh, growing. Okay. Um, and then New York, you know, it's the capital of every of everywhere. So it's always good to have an office here too. So how is the fashion going to change from location lo to location if it does actually change? I don't even really think it changes yeah. that no. much. <clears throat> Not at all. Yeah. The only thing that's going to change is is the is the vibe, the environment. You know, everywhere you are, you're going to be influenced by something different. That's the beauty of living in different states. And the streetwear culture is yeah. like so universal right now. Like you'll see kids wearing the same stuff. Like you know, we were watching the hip hop awards, and you have people that are from you know L.A. or Atlanta, oh, Texas, so wearing the same kind of shirt now. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. so it's not like so different anymore. It's like it's merged. It's, it's crazy. And how about your international clients? Do you see them wearing the same? They're super type? trend conscious. Yeah, they're really on a more than level. Us, I would think more at it. more of an accelerated rate. Yeah, the than, UK, yeah. the Japan market is so much advanced. Yeah. So do you get some of the? Do you find some of the trends over there first coming here? I don't know about first, but I would definitely say it's interchangeable. You know, they go hand in hand just as much as we work with domestic, have domestic relationships is the same way that we are budding international relationships as well. So I think that sometimes they'll see something and they'll reach out to us okay. as, hey, yeah. this is something that maybe you guys might want to piggyback on. I just had someone email me from Turkey yesterday. <laughs> Seriously. Wow. You know? So yeah, yeah. Um, I think that that's definitely a testament to what she was saying earlier in terms of fashion is, is a universal language. It really has no color, gender. And nowadays, trends are, are pretty much going in whatever direction you want them to go. And so do you, does that mean that you all have to travel um, quite a bit abroad or at this point? or, or Not are yet, you but we definitely foresee it. Mm -hmm. okay. We'll be all over the place. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and he can't I, wait for that. He cannot wait for that I, part. I like traveling. <laughs> <laughs> so where do you all think you would travel first as far as like what place would be the, the well, trend? I've abroad. So I've lived abroad for almost two years, so I kind of know where the fashion market is going over there. Um, but I think that I would definitely want to take them to Italy uh, and France, you know. Um, they always say Paris is the fashion capital of the world. Um, but you'll be so surprised at how Tokyo and Japan and Ireland, you know, Australia, all places that have a heavy streetwear influence. Yeah, that's culture, true. So that is okay. true. Yeah. Okay. I want to go to Tokyo. And, and, and so for people who <laughs> don't know, I mean, most people would know what streetwear is, but they might, is it like skateboarding wear? Is it hip hop? Is it a combination? What would, how do you describe it? I think it's a combination. It? It's so funny because, you know, streetwear used to just be like really grunge, but it's changed so much to the point where in, in fashion week, you have um, Tommy Hilfiger incorporating streetwear now and Polo incorporating streetwear into their fashion. So it's definitely changed. It's not what you Absolutely. were used to back then. It's definitely changed. The term streetwear now indicates lifestyle. Yeah, lifestyle. That is correct. And so when you see it on these very big name designers, like sometimes people will say, well, it's over then. Like, how, what do you, what is your take on it? Like, is it, is it still trendy at that point once you see like the more established designers with it? Or is it rather passe? Well, streetwear is not really passe because you always can mix and match. You can take a daytime look and nighttime it, you know, with a heel or a pun. Those are accessories. Okay. You know, we don't sell women's shoes per se, but, you know, jackets and outerwear and belts and bangles and, you know, rings, things like that. Those little pieces that can just add to your outfitting 
and just take it over the top is really what that's what streetwear is all about that's what it is yeah. it's no longer urban and relaxed do you understand what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And as long as you have major cities like Dallas and Miami New York LA there's always going to be streetwear yep. as, as long as those cities are, are around and I don't think they're going anywhere they're <laughs> always going to have streetwear okay we have about a minute and a half <laughs> left. This went by very fast. Yeah. Is there, still, um, is there something you, first of all, I don't think I got your Twitter handle. I think I got Pinterest and Instagram. Everything is at Sneaker Boutique. So Sneaker Boutique. Like Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and Instagram. Yeah. Perfect. And what would you like to leave us with? Each of you. Um, I guess we all normally like to always project something positive, you know, to anyone that we talk to I guess something that we consider a leave behind so I guess for me it would definitely be to commit to the process you know if this is something that you want to do if if you want to take your dreams to an elevated level definitely do your homework and commit to to the journey awesome thank yeah. you how about you Ernest and I would say um, take risk uh, without risk no reward uh, the greatest failure in life is never trying at all That's it. Excellent. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> and Nayla, you? Um, I would say keep going regardless of where you've been. Don't let anybody detour you from following your dreams and just keep going and definitely do your research. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you so, so much. Thanks for having us. I've enjoyed talking to you. Awesome. Likewise. You've enjoyed yeah. it. It's been very cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You all even finish each other's sentences. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, we're that in now. <laughs> That's oh. what the midnight oil is. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is Dustin's Kaleidoscope. I'm Dustin, and we will see you next time. Bye.